Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. Um, firstly, I would like to thank you, all of you, oh, okay. um, especially the organizers for inviting me here and at the same time apologize because I was the one beside Nicola who didn't uh, send the abstract in the right time. So there is a blank page. I hope you write something interesting if you hear it. Uh, so today I'd like to present to you an abstract of my diploma work from year 2011 uh, and it's called Hostages, the Wounded and Partisan Women. Did the break with Inform Bureau change the subject matter of public monuments in Slovenia from year 1945 to 1953? So uh, the goal of my diploma thesis was to find any changes uh, in the content uh, or the production of Slovenian public monuments before and after the break with Inform Bureau. The focal point was year 1948, uh, or rather the conflict uh, with uh, the break with the Inform Bureau when Yugoslavia distanced itself from Soviet Union and followed the new path to socialism. Uh, the selection of pub public monuments as my research subject was conditioned upon a view that these works are best manifestations of the connection between power and art, and this would also mean that every political change should reflect uh, on them as well. Uh, and since I searched for really, really direct and general motives, I excluded architectural uh, monuments and monuments dedicated to specific people and focused on sculptural monuments dedicated to national liber liberation struggle. So a few words on the break with Inform Bureau. Uh, it was founded uh, in year 1947, and at the uh, an inaugural meeting, it was characterized as an inter-party advisory body uh, coordinating the activities of communist parties. So Stalin's goal here was to merge all communist parties in some kind of homogenic uh, bloc, where there will be no place for the arrogance of uh, the leadership of Yugoslavian party. Uh, although Yugoslavian leadership followed the Soviet model when it came to uh, enforcing socialism, um, it believed in the independence of its revolution, its national liberation struggle, and that uh, manifested mostly in foreign, uh, aspira foreign affairs aspirations. And that was the core of the later Inform Bilog conflict and not the alleged um, internal ideologically ideologic um, deviations as the resolution stated. So Yugoslavia found itself on the edge of political and economical collapse and then the early 50s are marked by connections with uh, the West and also very important this self-managing socialism as an alternative to the Soviet model. Accordingly, the government formulated also the new cultural policy and introduced this moderate uh, modern, modernism as a state-endorsed art. And despite the relatively brief uh, insurrection against the Soviet Union, this period reached uh, mythical proportion, proportions in the subsequent Yugoslavian politics, uh, much like the resistance during the war. Uh, so, public monuments, uh, at least uh, numerically, uh, after the year 1945, uh, they bloom. Uh, the years, uh, the period up to 60 is described by Marin Tershan as the monument years. And in the contrast with this statement, uh, they were not uh, given uh, enough uh, attention, which can be said for all the, the period of socialist realism. Um, if we can say that on the one, on one hand, uh, this uh, post-war uh, art broke um, with pre-war patterns, uh, there's, it's also true that Slovenian sculpture had really um, uh, this uh, realistic uh, foundations. So maybe for the younger generation we can say that it was the easy way to stay in this realistic paradigm. And at the same time, the exact domestic tradition uh, prevented the new style from dominating in its pure form. And with the government blessing, the sculptures produce works in uh, this loose realism, uh, while the theory of social realism established itself principally in the production of public monuments, which is under the direct government control. Uh, so uh, if I say just uh, some most active post-war Slovenian sculptures, uh, Boris Kalin, Zdenko Kalin, Franciszek Smardu, uh, Karel Putrichin, Loise, and Loise Doliner. And they all represent in this uh, heroic, uh, monumental uh, figures, uh, art, uh, which is characteristic for the first years of social realism for the 1940s, 1950s, and uh, although the break of the Foreign Bureau happened in 1948 and the dissolution of Agitprop in 1952, uh, it took time uh, to see these really vast changes, 
uh, and uh, the sculptures controlled by the veteran commissions produce monuments in the concept of this self-sufficient uh, social realism as well as into the 1960s. So uh, now to go to direct uh, monuments, what I did in my diploma is that I divided the monuments in my target group according to the date, so before or after uh, 1948, and according to subject matter. So I categorized the subject matter motives as Red Army, Army Fighter, Partisan Bombardier, Partisan Woman, Hostage, Laborer, Wounded, Children and Youth, and Mother and Child, uh, and Allegories. So uh, certain motives as partisan, as we can see here, with, which you already saw in the presentation from uh, Katarina. Um, we see, see him also after the break with Inform Bureau, which should not surprise us because it's, it's one of this most profound identif identification points and a symbol for uh, national liberation struggle and revolution. So why would Yugoslavia, in time when uh, re re this uh, resolution it, um, says that uh, her uh, ideology this, uh, uh, is, uh, is the deviation, should change that. We can also uh, understand uh, this uh, partisan as um, some sort of uh, evidence of Yugoslavian self-confidence and maybe even as a way of resisting Stalin's and Forbilo's um, accusation. So then we have partisan women. Um, and she can be given another dimension, so not just the latter, but uh, it also testifies of the female fighters who fought, who won voting rights through active participation in the uh, national liberation struggle, as we also see here in this painting. And even the Soviet uh, post-war theoreticians uh, advocated that it was necessary to present the right image of the modern Soviet woman who took on the huge burden of those the terrible years. And here we see her, um, I don't know how good picture is it, but you can see her in the middle between two male figures and she, you can see that she's the same height, so she's portrayed equally, uh, but not um, on the, but it's, it, you can still see the traditional image with long hair and of course the skirt. Um, then if I move on, we have Cost Hostage. He's quite popular, uh, quite common, and it usually appears uh, on the location where hostages were executed or shot. And his purpose is to remind survivors and next generations of the fallen who made it possible for the new social reality to be constructed. So each of these hostages demands from the passerby to pay tribute to the fallen and also to help with the construction of the new world, uh, thus making sure that, sure that his death uh, that, uh, was not in vain. And this dimension is also emphasized by all the expressions of the pedestals and is the reason why Spelsa Chopic compared them to the modern extensions of the cross. Then we have laborer as you see here on this monument of Idria, and he's mostly represented uh, through his activity during the war. So here we see him, this laborer, and specifically you can see that he's a mine worker, because in Idria there was really uh, this big uh, mine of um, mercury. Uh, so we see him going to war and fighting for liberation and uh, not just that, but just for the next uh, socialist state where uh, he will be, uh, where his uh, class will be uh, represented as it should. Um, and uh, in accordance with the slogan, the heroes of battle should be followed by the heroes of labor, we also meet with laborers working uh, the po on the post-war reconstruction, although these motives are usually associated with interior sculpture. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, this motif, the wounded, or carrying the wounded, and uh, it testifies of the solidarity of partisans and the rest of population during the national liberation struggle. So uh, this solidarity moment was uh, really uh, important as well, and maybe we can even see a glimpse here at the right uh, side of the painting uh, of this um, motif. And then the children and the youth. So you can see that this monument is in Belgrade, but it was uh, made by Loise Doliner, so I included it also in my diploma. So we see here a little older girl showing the, the new life, the new future, as it says in the inscription to little boys. So we can understand them, not just uh, 
as a source sort of um, a paying tribute to their um, to their um, uh, to the younger generation and their contribution to the national liberation struggle. And maybe I will then ask you to look at the right and you will see the little boy who is keeping up with all the adults. So, um, but it's also, on the other hand, um, um, the, this a call to cooperation and rebuilding uh, the country to, to reach this def definitive victory of socialism. So this new life here, you can see that they're walking into it, and it's a new life which can be achieved in this world and not on the other. Uh, oh, then the mother and child, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, this is really profoundly human, so even though this is connected with the history and the role of the women in Second World War, it's also uh, very uh, general, so uh, it's, ha it's a motive that um, also, uh, we can see them before and after. So, uh, I wrote it with the Charmé, so the Red Army Fighter, which was uh, said a lot uh, by uh, Katarina, so I can skip that. Uh, so, she said that uh, it's really rare that uh, partisan and Red Army Fighter are put uh, as equal, and although there are a lot of reminiscence of Soviet Union, uh, it's not a lot of time that happened that they are in the same equal position, and it's the only motive that doesn't occur after 48, but then again, it can also be uh, connected with the fact that uh, Red Army uh, puts it on, put those sculptures on the way of their offensive. Um, then we have bombardier shooters and fighters, but they are mostly, again, partisans and uh, legaries, uh, which uh, we can say that uh, they are more ambivalent, but then again, we can see the, uh, the stars, the, uh, this uh, five uh, corner stars here. Uh, so, uh, but these are uh, represented after the year 1948. I'm very sorry because I'm hurrying, but uh, I want to make the last point. So uh, it was nudity that I find maybe some changes that occurred because uh, although it, uh, the idea of nudity existed before, it was first time in this monument that it was erected. So you see maybe something of a glimpse of an ancient hero because uh, all the attributions, uniforms, uh, guns are lost and it's just him and it's also hostage so you can see how he uh, changes through the time. So just for uh, uh, the end, uh, to, con to conclude everything, so the break in the four below did not result in significant changes of subject matter of Slovenia's public monuments and then I found a great quote of Miklaus Komel when he talks about them. Uh, after the fall of communist regime, and he argues that the monuments became subversive of the moment they stopped being a symbols of the ruling power and ideology. Symbolically, he says their emancipatory value was rediscovered. This meant that in 1991, in a new state and a new social reality, monuments to the national liberation struggle were used for a completely different purpose. How then would they not have the capacity to take on additional meaning in 1948 socialist Yugoslavia and become not just a symbol of World War II, but also a a symbol of resistance against Informiro's attacks uh, of Yugoslavia and, and maybe of Yugoslavian second victory. Thank you very much.